Hi everyone, it's Chris Gamble with a special report on a program called Lantive Timetabler. Yes, it's timetabling season and many of you, like me as administrators, have been given the task of timetabling for your school. I've been doing it for uh, eight years now and uh, I've been using Lantive Timetabler for seven of them. I've seen many different approaches from magnets on whiteboards to cork boards to post-it notes, uh, all kinds of spreadsheets, and this is my favorite way, so I thought I'd show you how. If you'd like to download this particular program, you can navigate your way to www.lantiv.com and uh, select the version 6.2.36. It's free to use and uh, a fantastic place to start when timetabling. Okay, so when you first open Lantive after you've downloaded it, you can uh, see the database function. Uh, there are two different functions that it, uh, that it can do. The first one is databases and then the timetabling workspace itself. The databases function is pretty simple. What it does is it collects some basic information about your particular school, such as the days of the cycle, so you could be a one, two day kind of school, or you could be a day one through six. I've even seen five day cycles as well, or Monday through Friday. You can name them anything you like, and you can uh, put as many of them in as you like. Then I go to lessons, you indicate when the school day starts, when transitions occur. I've put nutrition uh, break and morning daily uh, phys ed initiative because we're a balanced school day modeled school and students get two sets of independent breaks throughout the day. Next we have subject areas. So these are all the different potential subjects that can be taught in a K-8 school or our school in particular and even some of the specialty ones where we've had healthy buddies in ELA or uh, guidance and health in our particular school. Next you'll have to load all the teachers that you have in your building and uh, you'll do that by clicking on this particular icon here and in that section you can assign a specific color to each one of them so that when you go to the schedule itself you'll see a beautiful contrast of colors on it so you can tell who's teaching what to what group. After that uh, you go to activities and you will join these individual components together. You will add together uh, a particular group a subject being taught, the teacher, and the quantity of the classes that they will be taking, and the room that it will be taught in. Some classes don't require a room to be booked, so I haven't put them in. For instance, in kindergarten uh, homeroom, they don't have a classroom that's booked. But in gym, I do book the room because they will be competing for that particular resource with all other classes. Now to protect the anonymity of my students, the teachers, and everybody in the school, I'm using the sample school that's loaded with Lantiv, uh, and it comes with every download. So you can go into it, and you can have a look at uh, how, generally speaking, a school could be set up, but every school will be different, every timetable will be different, uh, and of course, uh, this particular group shows you how to do a number of things that, uh, that are quite useful. So if we have a look at the teacher, uh, this uh, if I select teacher here, it changes this drop-down menu. So you can see that there's uh, a list of teachers here. If I go to groupings, uh, there are different classes. This is a very sophisticated uh, version of timetabling, probably much more sophisticated than most will need in a, in a simple K-8 to school. Uh, but suffice it to say, it can be as easy or as complicated as you want it to be, uh, or as, as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. I'm going to start with class uh, A, and uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have a look over here, and I'm going to start to uh, drop in some courses. So if I click on Art, which is taught by Mr. Brown, because there's nothing else in the schedule right now, I can click and drag it in anywhere I choose on the schedule. Uh, so now you'll see that there were four that were supposed to be scheduled and only one has been scheduled. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a couple more of those in. Uh, he needs one more, so I'm going to put it here. And you can see that we've got four of four. And once you get four of four, you get a little check mark here. If I want to have a look at uh, the teacher's particular schedule, I can see here under teacher, I can have a look at, uh, was it Mr. Brown? Yeah, there we go. Uh, or Ho Mrs. Brown, Holly Brown. So she's got this schedule here. I can have a look at the students themselves, and I can look at Mr. Brown or Mrs. Brown's schedule as well, and I can see that they actually match. Now, if I was to try to take 
uh, another course by Mrs. Brown and put it on top of it. Let's say I'll do biology next here. So I'm going to drop these in just for fun, same as I did last time. Different group of kids, different teacher, uh, but uh, same issue. So she, um, this particular teacher, let me see if I can read the name here. Oh, it's a Mr. Gary Blue. If I try to drag a course onto a spot where he's already got the, uh, the class working, uh, or he's already got, already got another class scheduled, it won't let me do that. It'll say that there's, a, there's an error. So do not schedule, ignore conflicts and schedule, which mean they would be scheduled on top of one another, uh, which sometimes you would do with maybe particularly in a gym where you'd be dividing the space. But in this case, we don't want to schedule it there. We're going to heed the warning and we're going to place it in here as well. So there we go. Uh, and you can see it's blue now. One more will make it green and we've scheduled that entirely. So you basically go through your entire schedule, clicking and dragging things in. One area of caution uh, that uh, most of you will have schools where teachers have uh, prep periods or per periods that are designated as breaks. It's important at the onset when you make this schedule that on paper ahead of time you decide who's going to teach what and you make sure it balances. It's pretty hard to do right on the screen. It's pretty hard to uh, juggle those things around when you don't have designated amounts and percentages of courses and that sort of thing. In Manitoba, for instance, I have to have 13% uh, of course-related time. So we've got 36 periods in a day. It works out to 4.68 periods of science or social studies on any given uh, run of the cycle. Uh, now. If I don't figure that out ahead of time, I've got to do a lot of going back to the database and, uh, and adjusting those things. If you figure it out ahead of time, you can uh, basically organize your pieces uh, as you go and not worry about the percentages and who's teaching what as you go. Uh, but uh, please leave me some feedback if you have any questions or uh, if you have uh, any comments that you think would add to this particular video. Uh, I'd be happy to entertain those. You can reach me at uh, Twitter at CS Gamble. And uh, that's timetabling with Lantif. Enjoy.